Driven to Kill is the Steven Seagal documentary where he set out to show the world he's not just an international sex symbol, but one of the greatest minds of his generation as well. Why does that not surprise me? That all goes to sh though, in literally the first line of the movie. Metal spike roulette. Honestly, baby, that was my favorite part of the book. While I'll never believe Seagal as an award-winning writer, I do believe the best part of his book would be something as stupid as spike roulette. You hide a metal spike under a cup and take turns betting until someone hits the cup with the spike? Yep, it's as dumb as it sounds. It's also a sensitive subject. It's a long time ago, we don't really talk about him. Then why'd you put it in the book? I didn't. You know that's his girlfriend because he's older than her father and she's dumber than shit. You know my girlfriend Selena? If you show me this trick, that you'll have both of us. It's not a trick, you goddamn idiot. It's a one in three chance of really fucking up your hand. <gasps> Amazing work, Seagal. You managed to pull off what was the most likely outcome. Oh my God. I'm sure Selena's going to be thrilled that her friend pimped her out so you could see Seagal slap a paper cup. How do you lack so much self-awareness that you don't see how stupid all of this is? The trick was just to not give a f Seagal is working on his groundbreaking new novel that's made up of nothing but fart sounds or possibly the script for this movie. They're pretty much identical. He then gets a phone call and whoever's dubbing his voice gets to show off the terrible accent he'll sometimes have throughout the movie. She's marrying Stefan Abramov. So he flies out to New Jersey for his daughter's wedding and tries his best to blend in, but this cabbie's not buying it. California? Is that obvious? Nothing about Seagal says California. You don't get sandwiched amongst enough people, you wind up never knowing it. What the f are you talking about? Seagal tells him to pull over so he can call a different cab and waits in this Russian bar where he finally remembers what his real voice sounds like. Please tell everyone. Yeah. I'm back here. This old man then drops the bombshell that he and Seagal's enemies have read a book about Seagal's life that hasn't even been written yet. The guy in California is writing a book about your life. I read it. I think your enemies read it too. Before we can even process what that means about time as a linear concept, we're interrupted by a Seagal power fantasy. You offended us. You need to be punished. Where he punches with so much force <laughs> that it not only shatters the cup, but reality itself as the cup then fully reforms. Oh, fuck. This guy wasn't planning to battle Dr. Steven Strange Seagal, and after watching him shapeshift back and forth from fat to thin, he tries to weasel his way out of it. I'm not like you, I'm just a pretender. Sorry, bro, but jokes aren't going to save you because Seagal doesn't get them. <laughs> This is Terry, the new husband of Seagal's ex-wife. It's not clear if he's a hero or a villain. <laughs> we'll have to keep an eye on him. So Seagal stops by, and while Terry is a passive aggressive dick. Terry Goldstein, I'm also a defense attorney, so I defend guys like you. You must be Ruslan, the guy who writes the snuff books. Seagal goes straight for the fucking jugular. <laughs> The real question is where did her life go horribly wrong that she's in a love triangle with these two? Oh well, Seagal's here to see his daughter and her fiance. Nice to meet you, finally. My name is Stefan Arbarn. Then, the day before their wedding, Seagal gives his daughter a ring out of nowhere and expects it to be her wedding ring like that's not weird as fuck 
and she agrees. Why don't I put this over here for the wedding ceremony? First Seagal movie, huh? And that's not even the most bizarre thing in this short little scene. Go to the hotel and get changed and meet you at the church. Who the f is this? I don't know, but they're fucking terrifying. The good news is that thing leaves. The bad news is they hired the worst florists of all time. <laughs> now, Seagal's at a bar getting faced because he knows just how goddamn stupid everything's about to get. You better take another shot. He calls the house, and for some reason, the police answer the phone. Something's happened here. I need you to talk to my sergeant. You didn't even ask who he is or why he's calling. Why the f does he need to talk to your sergeant? Seagal figures this is dumb, but if he goes there in person, it can get so much dumber. So he takes a taxi to the house, then he does the perfectly normal thing and steals a cop's badge. They bring his daughter down, who's in bad shape. Stab wounds, concussion, she's critical. Look, guys, I know there's a lot going on, but maybe before you get all the detectives out here with the forensics team and the guy you talked to on the phone who had time to call a taxi from a bar, just maybe before all that, you should get the critical patient to the fucking hospital, you incompetent fucks. And that goddamn oxygen mask isn't even plugged into oxygen. What the fuck is wrong with you? And this lady actually has the gall to hassle him. Sharp dresser. Can't you see the badge lady? Get off his fucking back. Where are you from, Detective? The 2-6? Luckily, Seagal gets out of it with some quick thinking. Yeah. Smooth, Seagal. Smooth. Like hell. That's my number. What the f is this? Never mind. He's a fucking idiot. He's the father. Yeah, it's real sad that she's your daughter and all, but just deciding I'm a police now is some really crazy sh**. Somehow, Nobody ever mentions this again. And why the f are you guys still here? Then Seagal actually suggests this. We gotta be in agreement. Nobody can know my daughter's still alive. Sure thing, you complete fucking psycho who five minutes ago was pretending to be her. Of course, they go along with it. Mm, that's for us too because this movie's total garbage. And God damn it, wash your face, your pores are disgusting. So now he's at the hospital with that accent again. That's my daughter. And he does what any grieving father would do and gives the doctor his number. You call me at this number. I'm pretty sure this wasn't a part of the movie. They just forgot to turn off the camera here because she looks absolutely terrified. The detective doesn't want to be left out of this show. You promise you won't share the fact that she's alive with anyone else? It'll damage her case if the killer finds out. First, he's not her killer because she wasn't killed. I do agree with your second part. The victim not being dead would be devastating to that murder case, you shitty fucking detective. So Seagal breaks into Terry's house and just waits at his desk like a creep. I guess I should have knocked. He does this so Terry can tell him how awesome he is. I don't have the same skills as a man like you. You're a dangerous man, Ruslan. Now he wants Seagal to get the f out. Why does that not surprise me? So he gives him the phone number of a gun dealer. I'm gonna write this man's number down right now. But writing numbers is really hard so he scribbles nonsense on the paper instead. I don't know what kind of phone Seagal has, but he somehow makes it work. The guy he meets is a true professional. We're not gonna use any names. Ruslan from LA. That's a name f face. Seagal pretends to wanna buy a sh little revolver, but then shoots him with his money. <laughs> And 
steals their guns. It's completely justified, though, because they thought he was a cop. Told you I wasn't a cop, bitch. If that doesn't make sense, it's because it's a Seagal movie. It's not supposed to. Then we get the best scene of not just the movie, but Seagal's entire career. And now back to the dog shit. Since there's only one pawn shop in all of New Jersey, Stefan and Seagal's body double check it out and just happen to find the stolen wedding ring. If you study the stone up close, it's flawed. So Seagal viciously attacks the clerk ah! and walks out. Now that they've bravely assaulted the elderly business owner, oh, oh. they talk about their next move. Did you hear the address he gave me? Nobody gave anyone any address. What the f are you talking about? You know what? Who cares? They magically know where to go, and that accent is fucking terrible. Believe me, we won't need one. This is the point where I assume the director finally had enough of Seagal's bullshit and walked out, leaving Seagal to do all the dumb shit he wants. They arrive at the address from the scene they forgot to film, and Seagal starts spraying bullets everywhere. Jesus. He massacres everyone in the building, except for the exact criminals he's looking for. Think that's a cop? No, dibs. I really don't think they're the cops. So they get into a shootout in a hallway that's conveniently filled with appliances. If the fire marshal sees this, he's gonna have your ass. Down the hall! Not only does this refrigerator already have bullet holes in it, which tells you this is one badass hallway, but it gets two more holes for every one round they fire. This guy is crazy. Oh really? The active shooter who's been unloading into anything and everything is crazy? No fucking shit. Get up. They figure there's no way in hell he's making it up these stairs, but Seagal outsmarts them by sending his body double while he takes the elevator. They catch this guy, and instead of getting any information out of him, they get excited and execute him. Then Seagal actually has the nerve to lecture Stefan. Pick up your fucking gun. Learn to respect the tools of your trade. Look, jackass, not only did you just use two different voices and accents, but you threw your gun on the ground literally two minutes ago. Let's go. Since they killed their only lead, they say f it, I guess we're not gonna solve this and just do what Seagal does best. It can't get any more awkward than getting a private dance in the same room as your dead fiance's father. Is it supposed to feel like this? I guess it can. Anyways, realizing the movie's not going anywhere and Seagal's content to just ride the rest of it out in the strip club, the bad guys say fuck it and go to him. Rusla! Again, he kills everyone without getting any information. But this time he does it to some upbeat Russian music. It gets him so pumped up and in the zone. That he just starts slaughtering random customers. Back at the police station, he's being interrogated about the whole killing spree thing. Pawn shop owner. Dead body of the projects. Sounds like 
gay marriage. Somehow, she accepts that as an answer. Sounds like gay marriage. And never brings either of them up again. Then, she somehow figures out that Seagal's a writer, even though he writes under a pseudonym. I don't know anything about that. How could she possibly know it's him? His palm wavering across those last milkshake cups. Okay, that's definitely him. Luckily, Seagal's lawyer has a brilliant legal mind and is able to get Seagal released with some very complicated legalese. I think we're done here. That's why he makes the big bucks. Realizing that Seagal's never going to figure it out and desperately wanting this movie to end, Terry just comes out and confesses that he and Stefan's dad are the ones behind everything. He hated the idea of his son marrying your daughter. Had a lot of debt with Stefan's dad. She was gonna blow the whistle on me and all my side deals. Then they and this human crash test dummy have a 10 minute shootout without a single cop showing up in their own f***ing parking lot. Luckily, Seagal has something special in store for us. He actually runs. Not down the stairs, obviously, but still. Flap those arms, you magnificent bastard. Since trying to outrun the human bowling ball is futile, he accepts his fate and gets a rusty spike stabbed into his carotid artery. <laughs> then Seagal does some more sprinting right past the dumbest cops in history. Terry then gets in his car, but Stefan is waiting for him and holds him at gunpoint. Then, in an amazing coincidence, Seagal gets in the car and also holds Terry at gunpoint. The only problem is he's pointing his fucking gun at Stefan. There you go. Then everyone finds out Seagal's daughter is still alive and they haul ass to the hospital. This is Stefan's dad, who also rushes to the hospital in order to re-kill Seagal's daughter. They come up with an incredibly elaborate plan. Even with their sirens, that gives us 10 minutes, at least. Which all goes out the window when Seagal outsmarts them by pulling the fire alarm. I thought he said we had more time. Then they do the most unforgivable thing I have ever seen. They take an elevator during a fire alarm. Are you insane? Speaking of, all these people know is there's a fire alarm, so they do the smart thing and barricade themselves in a room. If that's not stupid enough, what they barricade the door with is this rack that's on fucking wheels. I'm sure whatever you're hiding from would find that mildly inconvenient. How are you guys doctors? Now Seagal realizes he needs to pad the runtime if he's going to hit 90 minutes and has a shootout with the bad guys that goes on for what feels like forever. And nobody even gets hit. They do this twice. Motherfucker! Since this is going nowhere, they decide to grab their secret weapon. This motherfucker can shoot through anything. But Seagal has his own magic gun that's able to fire before it's even loaded. But don't worry about that. Just focus on the Oscar-worthy performance from these two. He'll explain everything. Nothing can explain this. I didn't pull the trigger. You might as well have. Simply amazing. But not to be outdone in his own movie, Seagal is suddenly a scientist and somehow builds a fucking force field. Then to show off his deep knowledge of chemistry, he improvises an explosive. Oh. 
Now that he's created a scientifically accurate nuclear bomb, he takes out the last henchman. So now it's just Seagal and wannabe Putin who have a final fight <laughs> to shitty Russian sounding music that's a real back and forth struggle. Now that he's saved the day, Dr. Seagal goes to his daughter and using his advanced medical training, wakes her from her coma. Wake up, my daughter. Daddy. Oh, for fuck's sake. 